Hi, do you have a vibrating Samsung dryer? One that sounds like this, maybe? And I'm not sure if you can hear the vibration or not, but as a visual aid, I brought this little cup of water and I'll just set it on here. You can see the vibration, the cup's walking away, and you can also hear the vibration by virtue of the kind of the rattling of the cup. In any event, this washer and this dryer here is less than one year old. And uh, we have noticed this problem for the last several months. We had a service technician came out and he said, oh, I know what the problem is. That's the idler pulley. I'll be back and, you know, came back the next week and changed the idler pulley at a time when I wasn't at the house. And uh, it was a good guess because the idler pulley, when I looked up the, you know, when I'm looking and Googling problems on these dryers, the idler pulley is a very common fail thing for these dryers, but when the idler pulley goes bad, it makes a screeching sound. It's not this low frequency vibration like this. And so uh, basically he kind of left and couldn't figure it out and let, told my wife she was out of her mind for even thinking that, that there was a problem with it. And, and we all know that there's a problem with this. I, I was Googling this and it seems like lots of people have this problem. And so that's why I'm making this video. I've already opened this up and determined what the problem is and we're going to be fixing this thing today and I just wanted to make this video to put this out there to help people who have this kind of problem let them know they're not crazy uh, this is you know it's not supposed to be doing this and so the you know what the, I tell you what wh where we're going to be working is in a part that looks like this and there's two problems that could be and in my case the problem is the whole this blower wheel here but the, the, there's there could be another problem and they're both in the same area and we're we'll talking about both of them uh, i got this from appliancepartspros.com it seems like a great company they shipped this to me a day ahead of when they said it was going to come it's only 25 dollars. it's going to be a pretty easy thing to repair for anybody uh, and so anybody should be able to handle this so appliancepartspros.com shows you how to do this and how to change this wheel which is great the, the interesting thing is they don't show you why to change this. In other words, when, when you've got this kind of vibration or what, what could be the cause, why you would want to ch change one of these in the first place. So that's kind of what I'm going to be going through. And I'm going to be going over a shortcut, hopefully. Uh, I hope this shortcut's going to work out. We'll see. Uh, but the first thing they tell you to do is to turn off the power. I'm going to leave the control panel here. And I'm going to also open the door so you can see the light. And so what I'm going to do is turn off the breakers. Two ways to do it. You can unplug the thing, uh, but the plug's a little bit difficult for me to get to. So I'm going to uh, just turn off the breaker here in a second. And uh, let me get by here, William. All right. No, you rush the dryer. Okay, be right back. in there is no longer lighting the control panel is no longer on so it's definitely off so the first step is to access way down in here to get to it we got to open up the hood here and there's a couple of ways to do this that appliance parts pros guys recommend a pretty easy way which is to go behind the unit and take two screws out um, and I didn't like that method because when you do that you're also disabling the hinges which I thought were going to be kind of more handy for me to use so how I did it when I did it, and I didn't kind of reassemble it, but I just used some upward thrust with my with my um, with with the heel of my uh, hand here, and I just went like this. And because what happens is it's hooked on with these little hooks right here, and so with some upward motion, you can uh, kind of release those. The the other way, and probably the right way, the way uh, service technicians would do, is they'd get a fine screwdriver in here and. You'd have to know exactly where they are and there's a there's a chance of kind of marring up the surface so i just didn't want to do that so like i say the first step is to kind of get this thing open one way or the other whether you use the appliance parts pros um approach or my approach uh or the official service technician approach of a screwdriver um uh and then to to lift this sucker up like this so uh what you'll notice is that this wire here is really pretty taut you know, they don't really leave you much extra. And so this, you just kind of undo these little plastic things like this. Uh, and then the wire can be released from 
these areas here and what I'm going to just put the and in order to do that I'm going to have to move the dryer a little bit so that this will stay up um, like, yeah, that'd probably be good enough okay so the next thing they tell you to do is to take out three screws from this area and it's a little bit amusing because there's actually all kinds of screws in this area so you want to make sure that you get the right three screws and the right three screws are all in this area right here it's just kind of all in a row So the next thing is to, this This now starts to, up. Oh, there's a couple more screws in the front. So the, there's a couple more screws and the appliancepartspros.com video actually shows this pretty well, probably better than I'm gonna do. The next screw is right here below the, the little switch here. And in this particular model, I don't have to worry about what's catching this screw, but the appliance parts pros uh, video showed the guy actually holding this nut and removing that. Uh, so that may be the case on yours. Probably good to put your hand right behind here while you're unscrewing it just in case that sucker falls out and you need to retrieve it. Uh, and then the next two are down here. So it's basically a total of six screws. So then the next thing is this thing now is, is really loose and I'm going to push down. This is it. It took me a little while to figure this out. Take, take a look at this. How I'm pushing this. This is like the letter L and I'm pushing this down to allow this metal to pass here. This one here might be a little bit more tricky now that this is released, but we'll see. Get that screwdriver. So we'll use a great screwdriver in this case. Yeah. All right, just like that. So now this is released, and this thing just lifts off now. And what the appliance part pros guy tells you to do is then disconnect this wire, but I found that there's enough, there's enough length in it so that I can just move this to the side like that, and that's really pretty convenient. So let's see if I can angle this out a little bit to get a better angle on that video. Yeah, probably something like down here. So the next place where we're going is down in this area right here. So I show you that the first time I tried it, like I said, I already took this sucker apart to troubleshoot the problem. In, and one of the things that I kind of struggled with a little bit was this. So may as well remove this next. You can just put this inside the dryer so I haven't hurt anything. Because the, the screws that we're going to be really removing is this one right here. And this one here, down by the blower. Come on. And there is one over here. Let's see. And that should be all of them. Let's see. Then this thing just kind of slides off. It's a little tricky to get back on, but it comes off really easily. I'm just going to put that here as well. Put the screws up there. And uh, the next thing, so so where the trouble is is right in here. This this is what's causing the the vibration down in here. So we got only two more screws to access this. So, and then this kind of lifts off. The third point of contact is just a, a thing that looks like that. So it's just a tab. There's no third screw holding it. All right, so here's where the problem is, and this is what's causing the vibration. And so I'll tell you what I thought the problem was going to be. And, and apparently, in after extensive Google search, I found one 
lady who said they found a repair technician that had this problem and this is how they fixed it. So um, what I thought the problem was going to be was lint clumped up just on one side of the wheel, right? So in other words, the, the, the lint would be all on one side and it would be creating weight only on that one side so that when uh, the wheel was turning, it was just like this, this um, uh, off-balanced thing causing this vibration. That wasn't the case here. And in fact, I'm going to remove this stuff here momentarily to show you what is the case in, in the case of my dryer. It could be the case in yours, too. If you take a really close look at the wheel while I rotate the drum, you can see that that thing is just really kind of wobbling all over the place, right? And so that's the problem. That's what's causing this vibration in this case. So um, the... And I, br I brought this toothbrush out here because if it's just a lint thing, you can clean up this wheel just with this, with this toothbrush and then just toss the toothbrush in the garbage uh, once you're done with it. So... Um, all right, so we need to take the wheel off, and the, and, the, and the next step, what the Appliance Parts Pros guys recommends is it becomes a two-person job. One person behind the motor holding a big nut that's the size of this thing, and another person on this side with the socket wrench turning the, turning the nut this way clockwise to, re to remove it. I'm going to try a trick of not doing that because I don't want it to become a two-person job. Um, and I'm just going to try uh, a little bit of a trick. And what I'm going to try to do is hold the wheel while I rotate the thing. So instead of holding the motor shaft while rotating it, I'm going to try to hold the wheel. That should work. I'm hoping this will work. Uh, if it's not, it's going to be a little bit embarrassed. I mean, on the other hand, it's uh, going to show because I'm sure I'm not the only person going to have the idea of holding the wheel while turning it. And if it doesn't work in this video, you're going to know it doesn't work and not to try it that way. So, so we'll see what we can do here. And let's see. Okay, so there's, I'll just try holding it with my feet or something. Let's see. That's really on there pretty good. Let's see. Okay, so that is not so easy, but I got a trick up my sleeve. So my mechanical engineer, Ryan, loaned me an impact driver. Uh, and so we'll see if this works and if, if this is helpful in breaking that, uh, breaking that uh, kind of the the strength of that nut loose a little bit. And again, it's a clockwise thing to remove the nut. Um, so let's see. Yep. <laughs> so if you got one of these, it's, it's a child's play. Uh, nut comes right off. So, uh, all right. So, and I'm not gonna be putting it back on with one of these. I'm gonna be uh, doing something else with some Fred Locker. But, uh, but yeah, that worked pretty well. And if you don't have one of these, it looks like the best approach is to have a second person with a wrench on the other side of the motor to, uh, to get that out of there. So now this thing should just kind of pull right out. And what they say is you might have to kind of push on this a little bit to, to help get this out of, the, out of the way, hopefully. Yeah, it works like magic. So, so this is the old one, and, and what's, what's wrong with this is, you know, it's just a really low density plastic, and if you take a look at the, at the plastic, the coloring, like this here is really translucent, and then up in here, it's really discolored. It makes it look like there was air bubbles in there that got in there during the injection molding process. So it's just, it doesn't really look like a, it was made all that well. So anyway. So since I'm going to be putting this back on, not with an impact driver, but just with a regular socket wrench, and I'm going to be uh, locking the nut on with some thread locker, what I want to do is make sure that I get the, both the nut and the, that uh, 
shaft surface clean so that the thread locker can do a good job. And I'm just gonna make sure that I get that cleaned up pretty good. And I brought a Q-tip. that I can get the nut clean too. All kinds of stuff on there. Okay. Alright. So, good thing I left the lift on it or else I might not be able to tell which one was which. Okay, so. We'll get the wheel here. The shaft has a kind of what we call a flat on it, and I just oriented the flat upward so that I can just kind of, it'll be a visual cue to me to help me to get this on, hopefully. Okay. Yeah, and I'm just kind of wiggling it back and forth, make sure I get that on there, right? All right, so let's do it sanity check here let's see yeah it's, as you can see it's much much smoother much straighter so okay we'll get that nut on there put a little bit of thread locker on there how about that it's a brand new bottle and they didn't open it for me yet so i'll be right back i'll get, get a pair of scissors and open this sucker up So, put a little bit of thread locker on there. Okay. And this is, once again, it's a kind of the reverse of what would normally be the case. So this one here, tightening is counterclockwise, not clockwise. And let's see. Okay, so. i use my foot as a kind of a fulcrum there. And that really should be tight enough, really. Shouldn't need to have all that kind of torque on it. All right. So, one more time with the sanity check. I'm just gonna kind of rotate the drum. You see much straighter. Not perfectly straight, but much, much straighter than it was. Okay, so we'll put it all back together. So I'll get back into this position here. Reverse in the order, this thing here. Let's see, the tab goes downward and these uh, things here are like at 10 o'clock and two o'clock type deal. And there should be no effort involved in getting it back in. Now, I'll show you something I'm just now noticing. One of these screws is shorter than the others. See, that one's shorter than all these others, right? So uh, we'll have to make sure that we get that back in the right place. We get a little bit of a clue uh, because this one had some lint on it. So this one must have come from down in this area right here. So the next thing is this kind of housing here. And this was a little bit tricky to get back on. It comes right off, but then getting it back on was a little bit, a little bit tricky here. So let's see if I can figure that out. Okay, so this kind of back in here goes into here, like this kind of a socket type deal like that. Um, and this is a gasket. We want to make sure that we get that gasket just tucked up in there correctly. Right, this maybe. Right. Yeah, going in there. Yeah. So, uh, and then you have to kind of pull up a little bit to get this to, 
past the, the base metal there. All right, so. Okay. So then we've got three screws left, one short one and two longer ones. The longer one I'm going to put into the plastic housing that's down in here. short one I would have put into the, the metal here. Seems like a good candidate for that. And then the third one over in here. Okay, so then we got this, put that in the back next, and let's see. And to get this back, it's a little tricky, I'm letting this sit on my foot, but there's these up pointing kind of L shaped things that go into some slots down here. And it's not too difficult to put into place. Just kind of rests on there like that. And, uh, and so then the next trick is just kind of folding these L-shaped things down so that we can slide this past it. Look at that. A lot easier getting, getting it together than it was getting it apart. Okay, and then we just put some screws back in. So. Um, so there's two types of screws here too that we took out. Ones that have this kind of a star washer on them and other ones that have this flat washer. The ones that have the star washer are the ones that goes up in this area here. screws down in here, two of them down in this area here. So now we just kind of dress the wires, which looks a little bit tricky because they don't give you any, <laughs> any extra length on that. You just go in there and the little things just kind of fold around the wire to keep it into place. Like that. So, and this is a little tricky. I don't really want to go back in there, but I'm make it work. wasn't such a good idea closing that door. Seemed like it was, but all right, let's see. Getting these. This maybe? Yeah. Okay, so a little tricky to get those clasps. Especially especially both of them at the same time. It's gonna be a little tricky, but not too tricky. So 
So I'll turn on the breaker and see how well we did. Pretty smooth. It's a little bit of vibration still, but much, much, much better than it was. So, uh, so yeah, looks like that was a solution. So I hope this video helps you. When I was Googling to try to figure out what was gonna be the solution for me, I saw a lot of people, and I read one lady had a lot of desperation in her posts, and she said, I guess I bought a $900 piece of junk. And it was, I mean, these dryers, the washer and dryer pair that we bought, with the most expensive washer and dryer that we could buy at the time from H.H. H. Gregg. Uh, and I'll tell you what, it's, uh, you know, we, we wanted to get something nice and something that would last. So it's, uh, it is a, dis a very discouraging when things aren't working the way they should. And so this is an easy solution. That part cost $25. You saw, probably took me, what's the video? 26 minutes. 26 minutes to do the whole thing while talking about it. So, uh, yeah, I th I'd like to say I hope this helps you. Thank you. See ya.